Hey everyone, Random Randy here, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable little amigurumi crocheted narwhals. I have four different sizes here, but I'm only going to be showing you one of them in this particular video, and the written pattern to go along with it will be up on my blog for free. I am planning to release a PDF with pictures and all of that fun stuff. That will include all four sizes for a small nominal fee. So I'm just going to run you through the sizes of these right quick and then we're going to get right into making the medium sized narwhal. Firstly, have this itty bitty little creature right here. This is what I call the micro narwhal. It is very small. As with all the others, it has a floppy little tail the cute little fins. This one I did not put a mouth on. I didn't really think it needed it. And its horn is made from a different type of sparkle yarn than all of the rest of them. This one is made with Hirschner's Holiday Yarn, and this is Deborah Norville Everyday Yarn in the Parfait colorway. All of the rest of these are done in a Karen Simply Soft rainbow something or other. This is the jumbo sized narwhal. As you can see, it is quite large, close to the size of a softball. And this one has stitched on eyes. So if you don't want to do safety eyes for safety reasons, or if you just think it looks cuter with stitched on eyes, you can do that as well. This is the small narwhal. Slightly larger than the micro, but smaller than the medium or the jumbo. About palm sized. And this is the medium sized narwhal. This is the one we're going to be making for the tutorial today. As you can see, it has a very flippy floppy tail. Cute little fins, smiley little face. So, for this tutorial, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a Susan Bates inline hook. They're just my favorite type to use, but that's all about personal preference. You're going to want a tapestry needle for weaving in ends. You're going to need scissors for snipping your yarn. You may want a row counter just because we are going to be working in a continuous spiral. And because we're working in a continuous spiral, I also have a stitch marker so I don't forget where the beginning of the round is. As for yarn choices, you can really use anything, but I am using worsted weight yarn. If you were going to use a DK weight or something smaller, you would want a smaller hook. This particular yarn is a Hirschner's Worsted 8 yarn. I don't remember the colorway because they don't have, well, when I bought this yarn they didn't have the colorway names on the label. I just know that it is 100% acrylic and in various shades of blue and white. And for the horn, I'm planning to use this Hirschner's Holiday yarn. It is white with a silver metallic thread running all the way through it, and this is also an acrylic yarn. If you are not planning to stitch on the eyes, then you will also want some safety eyes. I have varying sizes, and honestly I don't know what size they are. I usually just pick them out and try and find one that seems to fit with the size of whatever I'm working on. There's that. And I would say that this tutorial is an advanced beginner or intermediate tutorial. It does have some more advanced quote-unquote stitches later on, but I am going to show you how to do those stitches as we get to them, so it won't really be a big deal. If you are a total beginner and not completely comfortable with single crochets, double crochets, or half double crochets, I do have a Crochet Crash Course 101 video that will show you all of those basic stitches, and I will link to that up here in the corner of the video so that you can check those out if you need a little bit of practice. 
to prepare to make this amazingly cute little unicorn fish. Last thing that you will also need, which I forgot to mention, fiberfill of any brand. This is polyfill brand specifically, I believe. I got it in a giant 10 pound box at Joann's and I just keep chunks of it in gallon bags as I need them. So there is that. And with all of those things set, we are ready to go. So grab your yarn and your hook and let's get started. Going to be making a magic ring. For those of you who don't know how to do a magic ring, don't worry, I'm going to show you. You wanna hold the tail of your yarn in your hand, wrap the yarn that's attached to the ball around your finger so it crosses over here, making an X. I like to hold on to the end with my pinky. You're gonna slide your hook underneath both strands, grab the one farthest from you, pull it through. You're going to chain one to lock the ring into place. And now we're going to get started with our stitches. For the first round, we are going to be doing six single crochet stitches into the magic ring. A single crochet is into the circle, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. So now there are two on the hook, yarn over and pull through both. One more time, through the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. You will need six single crochet stitches before we can move on to the next round. So finish those up and meet me when you are finished. And there we have our first six single crochets. That is the end of round one. Now we are going to grab the yarn tail from the end of the magic ring, hold on to your stitches, and just start gently tugging it to cinch the magic ring down. If your magic ring does come a little bit loose as you're working, don't worry, we can always tighten it up and weave in the end later. Now that you've got it all pulled together into a tiny circle, we're going to be doing round two, which is a single crochet increase in every stitch. And a single crochet increase just means that you are making two stitches in one stitch space. So this first space, we will do two single crochets. And I'm going to place my marker. The next stitch gets two single crochets. and so on all the way to the end of the row. So go ahead and finish up row two, and I will meet you when you are finished with it. And there we are at the end of row two. You should have 12 single crochet stitches. And now we're going to get started on round three. Round three, first stitch is one single crochet, second stitch is a single crochet increase. Make sure you put your marker before you get too far in. One single crochet, and then two single crochets. So keep repeating that pattern of one single crochet and then a single crochet increase until you get all the way back around to your marker and I will meet you at the end of the row. So now we have reached the end of row three and you should have 18 single crochet stitches going to start round four. The pattern for row four is one single crochet, one single crochet into the second stitch, 
and then a single crochet increase into the third stitch. One single crochet, one single crochet, single crochet increase into the third stitch. So go ahead and repeat that until you get back to your marker and we will move on to round five. So now you should be at the end of row four and have 24 single crochet stitches. So we're going to move on to round five. Round five is the same pattern as round four, which is one single crochet into the first, one single crochet into the second, and a single crochet increase into the third stitch. One single crochet, one single crochet, single crochet increase into the third stitch. So go ahead and finish up this round. You should have 32 single crochets when you are done with it, and then we only have one more increase before we are to the center of the body. Now that we have reached the end of row five, we're going to move on to round six. The pattern for round six is to single crochet in three stitches. One, two, three, and do a single crochet increase in the fourth stitch. One, 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 and single crochet increase in the fourth. So keep repeating that until you get all the way around back to your marker, and I will meet you at the end of the row. So now we have reached the end of row six and you should have 40 single crochet stitches. So now we are going to do several rounds of the same pattern that is just going to build the size of the body of the narwhal. This is row seven and it is just going to be a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So just keep carrying on for the rest of this row, and after that you will have five more rows. So six rows all together, where you just put one single crochet in each stitch. So your last row of single crochet repeats is going to be row 12. So go ahead and work on that, pause the video here. I'm going to speed through the rest of this row and then finish up the rest of them off camera to save us both some time. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you back in a little bit when you have finished all of the rows.
Now that we have completed row 12, the last row of the main portion of the body, we're going to start doing the decrease rows to round out the body. So the start of row 13 is going to pretty much be row 6, but in reverse. So we're going to do one single crochet. Make sure you place your marker. One single crochet into the second stitch. One single crochet into the third. And now we're going to do something that is the trick to really well done amigurumi, and that is called an invisible decrease. In a normal decrease stitch, you would go through both loops of the stitch on one, yarn over, pull up a loop, go through both of the second, and then pull through all three loops. However, for an invisible decrease to prevent having a gap between your stitches, we're only going to go under, we're only going to go under the front loop of the stitch. So we're going to go right through the middle of that top V, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we're going to go through the next stitch in the same way, right up through the middle, yarn over, pull up another loop. So now you have three on the hook, yarn over, and pull through all three. And as you can see, looking on the edge here, there's no huge space. So one more time, one single crochet, one single crochet into the second, one single crochet into the third, and then again an invisible decrease. So you go up just in the front loop of that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, go right up through the middle of that V again for the second, Grab your yarn, pull it through so you have three loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through all three loops. That is an invisible decrease and you are going to be repeating that pattern all the way around this row. So go ahead and finish that up and I will meet you back here at the end of row 13 and you should have 32 single crochet stitches at the end of this row. So now we are at the end of row 13 with 32 single crochet stitches and we're going to start round 14. This is going to be another decrease round. Single crochet in the first, single crochet in the second. Make sure you have your marker in place. Single crochet decrease with the third and the fourth. One single crochet, one single crochet into the second, and a single crochet decrease. So keep repeating that all the way around until you get to the end, and that will finish off row 14 with 24 single crochet stitches. As you can see, at the end of row 14, it is starting to look much more sphere-shaped, and right now it kind of looks like an urn from the top. So now that we're done with row 14, we're going to move on to row 15, and row 15 is just going to be single crochet all the way around. One single crochet in each stitch. 
So just like with the last round, you will have 24 stitches at the end of the row. So go ahead and finish up this row, and I will meet you back at the end of it. Once you have completed row 15, it is time to move on to row 16. Row 16 is another decrease round, and the pattern is going to simply be single crochet in one stitch, single crochet decrease in the next. Single crochet in one stitch, single crochet decrease in the next stitch. So finish up row 16 and you should have 18 single crochet stitches at the end of it and I will meet you once you get back to your marker. Once you have completed row 16, it is going to be time to add the eyes and the stuffing. So you will want to grab your safety eyes if you have them. I got this box of various sizes from Amazon for a reasonable price. If you're interested in getting this same box of them that you can see has obviously been loved and used quite a bit, I will leave the link for that in the description box below the video so that you can grab some too. Alrighty then. So I have found that for placement of the eyes, the best spot to put them is in between rows 7 and 8, so that they'll be slightly around here, so that when the horn is pointing out and you're looking at it this way, the horn will be here and the face will be approximately here. So, for placement's sake, we're going to just count down from the beginning. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, that means that it should go somewhere in this row. So, I'm going to put the first one here. And you don't want to put your backs on right away, the backs of the safety eyes because you might decide that you want to move the eyes around. You might want them a little closer together. You might want them a little bit further apart. The closer together they are, usually the more adorable it can seem. If the eyes are spaced really far apart, it can look a little bit more menacing, more shark-like almost. Just to give you an idea, this is another one that I have partway finished. And with this, the eyes are much farther apart. Much farther apart. So it looks a bit more predatory and not quite so kawaii. But I think that for placement, that looks about good. And just to give you an idea, as I said, this is between rows 7 and 8 on the body, and there are 5 stitches in between them. So once you're happy with the placement of your eyes, go ahead and put the backs on them. If I can hold on to it, maybe. And all you have to do is pop it right on there and just push it down until it sticks. Same thing with the other one. Mm 
We will get to you in just a minute, yarn tail. Just slide it right on there. So now that your eyes are in place, the next thing I like to do before I stuff the piece is to actually take the yarn tail that we began our magic ring with and take that to the outside of the body. I know that some people will just leave it in there, but I would rather know that it is completely secure and not going anywhere. So if you can see, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see inside there, but I just take it through a stitch near the ring and bring it out through the top. Give it a couple of tugs to make sure that it's nice and secure there. Then I just weave it through a couple stitches to make sure it's going to hold in place on the outside because once you stuff, if you accidentally overstuff it a little, you might have a little bit of space in between some of your stitches. Like looking here, I can see there's going to be a teeny little space here. So you can actually take this long tail and weave it through some stitches to fill in any gaps that you have. Now that the eyes are in place, it is time to grab the stuffing. A trick when it comes to dealing with fiber fill that my mother actually taught me is rather than just taking the lump of it as is out of the package and stuffing it into the piece, which will then give you the same weird lumpy bumpy quality you see in my hands, the best thing to do is to actually pull the fibers apart, which seems tedious and might seem unnecessary, but you'd be surprised at the difference it can make and how smooth your project will turn out in the end. If it seems like it's sticking together a lot, just make sure that you give those parts that are really oddly lumpy a little bit of extra attention. It really does make quite a difference. So then you're just gonna stuff it into the body. And the way that I like to stuff my amigurumis is to gradually put the polyfill in and then spread it to press it towards the outer wall of whatever I'm stuffing. So that this outer portion is going to get even more firm and then you have this center that you can fill in until it's the firmness that you want it to be. Or, if you don't have quite enough polyfill, but you have a lot of little yarn bits left over, I actually save my little yarn scraps to use for extra filling in the toys I make for my kids. But if you fill the outer portion with polyfill, you can then take and make a core in the middle out of yarn scraps, and you're much less likely to have them actually poke out and through your stitches. So if you're just a little bit shy on polyfill, that is a little trick that you can use to not only save some things from going in a landfill, but to help stretch your fiber fill that you have. And as you're stuffing, check and make sure occasionally that you don't have stitches that are starting to spread. Give it a few experimental squeezes. You want it to be firm enough that it's going to spring back and this is still just a little bit too soft. Stuff some more in there because 
if it is for small children, you want it to survive being squished and squashed and squeezed and stomped and rolled upon if the children receiving it are anything like my boys who are three and five. The last thing that you want is to spend all of this time making a special handmade toy for somebody and have it be completely deflated and more like a narwhal pancake than the round, cute, kawaii, roly-poly body that you really want to have. Just about. A little bit more. And stuffing it properly, much like pulling the fibers apart, can be a bit of a tedious process, but it really is worth it in the end. All right. So that looks good now. So we're going to move on to the last few rows before we sew up the body. This is going to be row 17. And just like row 16, it is going to be a pattern of single crochet and single crochet decrease. You'll notice that I'm holding it a little bit differently now. I find it's a lot easier for me to actually get the yarn through the stitches once I've got the stuffing in this way than it is to hold it here, the farther along you go. One single crochet, one single crochet decrease. Just going to keep repeating that all the way around. And once you get down towards the end here, if you're off by a stitch or two, don't really worry about it because you're going to be fastening it off and sewing it shut in just a minute here anyhow, so it's not a super big deal. Moving on now to row 18, which is just going to be a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. This will help reduce the amount of gaps that you have in this bottom portion. There you go. So now for row 19, we're going to be doing just single crochet decreases all the way around until you get back to the beginning should have somewhere in the realm of five or six stitches. I think in my decreases I managed to accidentally do an extra, so I might only have five. And that will finish us off. So go ahead and grab your scissors. Gonna snip the yarn and leave a decent sized tail, somewhere about eight to 10 inches to fill in any gaps that you might have. Just slip stitch into the next stitch and pull your yarn all the way through. That will secure it. Get your yarn in the needle. And we're just going to weave through the front and around the back of each stitch. I'm just going to seal it up. Just give it a little tug. And 
once you've got it completely straightened out, I like to go through the back loop of the next stitch, which is going to help flatten it out a little bit. And just pull it through. And pretty much all you're doing here is just weaving through portions of stitches pulling it tight to cinch down this portion, and as I mentioned before, filling in any gaps that you might see that could potentially be problematic as far as leaking fiber fills goes. And if you have to get to a space that is a few stitches away, you can always go behind them and come up out the top to fill them in. So once you have everything woven in and filled in to your satisfaction, you're going to take what's left of your tail. I like to actually loop it over a couple more. And I do almost a partial knot. There might actually be a technical term for this, but I am not sure, so I just call it a half knot which I'm sure isn't right if anybody is in Boy Scouts, but I like to just leave a loop of the yarn hanging loose here and take my needle back through it and pull it down tight. And that is going to make it so reclaiming the yarn from a project is pretty much impossible. <laughs> but you also don't have to worry about it falling apart. And once you've got that done, take your needle, stick it into a stitch here in the bottom, and you're actually going to drive it all the way through the body and bring it out the top. I'm gonna pull it all the way through. So see, it almost looks like he has a horn now. Give it a tug until your end comes free. Smoosh it around a little bit. Make sure that it's not warped because sometimes pulling the end through like that can make it kind of funky. Then you're just gonna snip off your end. And then give it a little tug to make sure it pops back inside. And now we have this final end that you can weave in however you want to. I like to, as I just mentioned a minute ago, do my little partial knot and just stuff it right back through the body. And then all the way through the body and out the bottom. Tug, tug, tug. Smush it around a little bit and snip off your tail. And there you go. Now you have a completed narwhal body. Next, we're going to move on to the fins and the tail, and we will do the horn last. So for the first fin, we're actually going to make two fins. We're going to need a magic ring, like we've done before. Maybe if I can hold the yarn. Going to chain one to secure the ring. And we're going to do six single crochets into the circle, just like we did to start the body. Once 
once you've made your six single crochets, just gonna grab your yarn tail and hold your stitches and cinch it down together to actually make the ring. Row two is going to be single crochet into the first stitch. I like to place a marker here. Single crochet increase in the next stitch. One single crochet, single crochet increase. One single crochet, one single crochet increase into the last stitch. That should give us a total of nine stitches. So now we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around for row three, giving us again a total of nine stitches. Now you're going to notice that it's trying to roll upward so you can fix that. So that it's pointing down. And for row four, you're going to be doing a decrease every other stitch. So row four will be single crochet, single crochet decrease. Single crochet, single crochet decrease. Single crochet, and single crochet decrease for the last stitch. And that is going to leave us with six single crochets. Moving on to row five, which is the last row. This is going to be the same pattern as the row we just completed. So single crochet, single crochet decrease. If you can actually even get a hold on it at this point. Single crochet and single crochet decrease. Be the last stitch of not only the round but also of this fin. And there we go. And this I don't generally stuff. You can if you really want to, but I prefer to just squish it flat and sew it on that way. So go ahead and snip your yarn. Remember to leave somewhere around, with how small this is, a six to eight inch yarn tail for sewing it on will be sufficient. Take out your marker. I like to slip stitch into the next stitch. And then pull my yarn all the way through. And there you go, there is fin one. Now go ahead and make a second one and then we'll head on to the tail fin and the horn. So now that you have both of your fins complete, we're going to make the tail. So just set these aside with the body. The tail is really essentially just a heart shape. So as with everything else, I'm going to start with a magic ring. So if you weren't familiar with magic ring before, you should be a pro at it by the time you're done with this tutorial. Chain one, chain one more. So we should have two chains, two chains. Now we're going to do three treble crochets. 
and a treble crochet. Sounds scary and complicated, but really it's just a double crochet with an extra step. So I'll walk you through it. Treble crochet, you yarn over twice. Then put your hook through the center of the ring, yarn over and pull up a loop so that there are four on the hook. Yarn over once more, go through two. Now you have three on the hook. Yarn over, go through the center two. Yarn over one more time and pull through the last two. And that is a treble crochet. Yarn over twice, through the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two more, yarn over and pull through the last two. So there is two treble crochets, we've got one left in this cluster, yarn over twice, into the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And now you have three treble crochets. Next we're going to do two double crochets. Double crochet is yarn over through the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. So one more double crochet, yarn over, into the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, through two, yarn over, through two. Now we're going to chain one, do two double crochet stitches again. Double crochet, one double crochet. Make sure you get all the plies of your yarn. There we go. And now we're going to do three more treble crochets. So I will show you a treble one more time. Yarn over twice into the center of the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. So now you're going to do two more treble crochet stitches. One more. That is the final treble crochet stitch. So now we are going to pull our magic ring to get the shape. Cinch it right down tight. Chain two. You might have to adjust it just a little bit. Then you're going to slip stitch into the center of your ring. And as you can see, it's going to give you a cute little heart shape that looks quite a bit like a big tail fin. Now we're going to do one more round just to make it a little bit bigger for this particular size. If you were making the micro size narwhal, this is all you have to do for the tail. So now to start the second round, we are going to go into the second chain of the chain two that started the last round. That is going to be this stitch right here, not the top of this first treble. If you put it in the top of the first treble, you'll do like I've done quite a few times and have to rip it out once you get to the end of the row because your count is completely off and you can't figure out why. So that is a single crochet right into that chain two from the first round. Next, we're going to be doing two half double crochets into the top of this first treble and a half double crochet. You yarn over just like with a double. 
put it through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a third loop, yarn over and pull through all three, maybe, loops. Again, yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. I'm going to do three half double crochets in the next stitch, so yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. So remember there are three half double crochets in this same space. Next stitch is two half double crochets. Next stitch after that is three half double crochets into one space. Then two half double crochets into the next. That is going to bring us to our chain one space from the last row, which is going to be the point at the bottom of the heart. So in this space, we're going to do a half double crochet followed by a double crochet in the same space and one more half double in that same spot. Now you're going to have to take your stitches here and kind of scooch them over so that you can see the top of this next double crochet because if you skip it and accidentally go into here because it's been run over by the center stitches, your count is going to be off and you're going to have to rip it back. So this first double crochet here, the next stitch is going to take two half double crochets into the same space. The next space is three half double crochets. And two half double crochets, three half double crochets, and this last one is going to be two half double crochets. Now as you can see, it is looking much more heart and tail fin like. To finish it off, I'm going to chain two and we're going to slip stitch it right into the space here before the single crochet that started the round. And that is going to round out our tail fin shape. So now you can cut your yarn. I leave an especially long tail here because we're actually going to be weaving this tail from this part down to the point because we're going to be sewing this pointed part onto the body of the narwhal. So again, leave about eight inch long tail, snip it off, and just pull your yarn through. Set that off to the side and the last part that we have to make is the horn. So now we are to the horn, which is the final part of the narwhal. As you can see, I have switched to the lighter yarn that I'll be using for the horn, still using the same hook. And as with everything else in this tutorial for this amigurumi, we're going to be starting with a magic ring. So if you weren't really familiar with magic ring before, you should be a total pro at it by now. So magic ring, we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet four into the ring. Now we're going to cinch it down just like with all of the other ones. And making sure that you go into the first single crochet, not into the chain space that you started with. I'm going to start off the next row with one single crochet. 
and place the marker. These first couple of rounds are going to be kind of tight, so don't worry if it seems like they are, it's just the nature of it being such a small thing. Next stitch is going to be two single crochets. So the next is going to be one single crochet, which will be into the third stitch of the round. And last, we're going to do two single crochets. And you're probably looking at it and thinking, what is this extra spot here? This is actually your chain one space from the last round, and you're going to ignore that and keep going. So that is the end of round two. You should have six single crochet spaces. And in this one right here, where our marker was, again, we're going to do one single crochet. And we're going to increase in every other stitch, just like the last round. One single crochet. Two single crochets. That should give us nine stitches. As you can see, if you roll it down, it's starting to look more cone shaped. So now you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around this row, but we're going to be doing it in the back loop only. The back loop is when you're looking at the top of the stitch here, you've got your two bars, you're going to be going into this one. So right here, you're going to be doing a single crochet, and that is going to make the front loop stand out and give it a really cool spiral ridge that's going to go all the way around the horn. Make sure you put your marker in, and just keep going all the way around this row, back loop only. Now, if you take a look, you can see that there's this little bit of a ridge that stands out. You're going to get that with every one of the next few rows that you do. So it's going to look more like the spiraled type of horn that you would see on something like an oryx. So we're actually going to do the same thing for four more rounds. So you're going to be working single crochets in the back loop only for four additional rounds. Your last round should be row eight. So go ahead and work on that and I will meet back up with you when you're done so we can get this stuffed and get it all sewn together. So now we have reached the end of row eight, and as you can see, it is looking much more like a horn. So now we're going to cut our yarn. I want to leave a long tail for sewing, so about eight to ten inches. I'm going to take out my marker and slip stitch into the next stitch before I pull my yarn through. That helps give it more of a flat bottom instead of having that really accentuated bump. With the tail that you started your magic ring with, you'll see it's just kind of dangling out the bottom. Just like with the body portion, I like to take it back up through the middle. That way you can cinch it down and secure it really well and weave it through any of these stitches on the outer edge. 
usually near where your row ended that may look a little bit loose. And then I'll just leave it hanging out so that after I stuff it, if there are any stitches that spread, I can fill them in. So now we're gonna get all of our parts together and we're going to sew it up. Alrighty, we have gathered all of the parts of our narwhal and I'm going to stuff the horn. and get it all stitched together. And that's how quick that was. So now I'm going to sew the horn on first. So you're going to want to thread your really, really long tail under your tapestry needle or darning needle, whatever you're using. Finishing needle. I've seen some of those that look pretty fancy too. I like to take the yarn and actually put it through this next stitch so it goes to the inside, which will also help make the bottom very smooth so you almost can't tell where the row started. And then it's a matter of placement. Generally, I like to put the horn pretty much lined up with whatever size circle it fits onto right from where we started the body because that will make it so it is right about here in line with the face. Sometimes I put it a little bit farther forward. Pretty much you just have to play around with it until it looks the way you want it to. Yeah, right there is good. So this is slightly off center to make it where I want it to be lined up with the eyeballs, but there we go. So now you really just have to hold it in place. Go through a leg or two of a stitch below and bring it up through the stitches on the horn. I like to go down through here, go through a leg of the stitch below it on the body, pull it through, down from the top through the horn, through a leg of the stitch. You want to make sure that you're going through both parts of the stitch on the horn so that it is securely held in place. And one of the fun things about sewing with thread that has metallic in it, it's going to be much more difficult to get it to slide where you want it to as you're sewing because that metallic thread catches on everything. But in good news, that also means that it's much less likely to unravel. So I guess you really just got to pick your battles. Catch that first stitch we went through one more time just to make sure it's good and solid. And just like with everything else, I can tell right here that I've got a few stitches that look a little bit loose. So I'm just going to weave back through here to fill in the spaces. Now because this is one color yarn, this is a lot easier. Unfortunately, sometimes when you're using a variegated yarn, it's a lot more noticeable. So you might want to consider going down a hook size or just making your tension a bit tighter as you're working. Luckily for me, this yarn is all the same color, so I don't have that issue because it really won't show. And I'm actually going to take it from here all the way right through the body of the narwhal, wherever the needle is going to come out. There we go. 
Now squishing it gets kind of awkward once you're dealing with all of these extra pieces, but it is well worth it to secure the yarn and then give it a couple of tugs, unless you want the horn to be bent down at a funky angle. So that one is all set. I'm just gonna trim it off. And this piece is actually long enough that I will be adding this to my scrap ball of yarn. My super small scraps, not my partial skein scraps. I'm gonna do the same thing with this end. And as you can see, when you're working with something that has a metallic ply through it, if it's prone to separating, you're going to have to just kind of twist them and hold them together, or you're going to have a weird tinselly mess hanging off the outside of it, which is no fun. I've dealt with that a couple of times. So I'm just going to take this, stick it down through the center of the horn, and just kind of pop it out the side over here somewhere. Here we can get it. You want to make sure you're not stabbing yourself. I mean, it is a blunt needle. But if you poke it through really quick, it can still be unpleasant. Just kind of pull, pull, pull. Once you get it through, squish it around and straighten it out. And then snip off your end. There we go. So now the horn is attached. Pretty awesome. All right, next, I like to sew on the tail fin. And as you can see with the tail, I still have the thread that we started the magic ring with. So I'm just gonna give that a couple of tugs to make sure that is solid. I'm going to weave that end in and fasten it off before sewing this on to the body. Now, could you use this tail to partially sew the heart fin to the body? Yes, you can. And sometimes I do that, but in this case, I don't feel like I have a long enough piece to bother. So I'm just gonna work it in through the back, do my partial knot, leave it under a couple more spots and call it good. That looks good enough. I'm going to snip that. Now for the sewing. You're going to want to thread your needle. Now you're going to need to figure out where you want it to be. Typically I line up the point of the heart. You're going to want to make sure that the right side of the heart is pressed against the outside of the body. So you want the obvious back of your heart to be on the bottom. So after you have woven in the tail from your magic ring through your heart, you're actually going to take the end you finished with, which should be here in the top of the heart. You're going to weave it through the backs of the stitches until you get it down to the point so that we can have it at that end to sew with. Got it, so it is now at the end. And as I said, for placement, you're going to want the right side of your heart pressed against the body of your narwhal. You're gonna want the tip of the heart facing towards the face. So you want it here, so that when you're looking at it, the tail will go down like this towards the back, 
with the proper side up. So then it's really just a matter of figuring out where exactly you want it to be. For me, I'm going to be putting it, this is our center where we fastened off, I'm going to be attaching it just a row or two in front of that, close to the face, so that when you set it down, it will actually be able to sit upright with the help of the tail and the fins, but we'll get to those. So now it's really just a matter of stitching it into place. Bring it back up through the same stitch and then go down through the point underneath that stitch on the body, back up through right next to it. down through the stitch on the tail, through a stitch on the body. And once you have it so that the tail is fastened as securely as you want it to be, so that it can flap freely, and you just go and weave your end in as you would anything else. Really my primary concern is making sure that it does not come unraveled, because especially if this was a toy for a kid, I know I would not want my children to chew a hole through it and have it all come apart and have a giant mass of yarn that they would be gnawing on. That would not be fun. Once you've got that all done, stick it right through here, poke it all the way through the body to the other side, give it a tug, until your yarn is completely out, smush it around, and trim it off. So your narwhal now has a horn and a tail, and it's time to get the little fins sewn on the side. Now in this case, because I have such a short tail, and these are not stuffed. I am just going to use a square knot to secure the short tail to the long tail. Yarn tail, not fish tail, obviously. And I'm just going to take this back through the center of the fin. Just poke it out the end. And that will be more than enough security for that particular bit of yarn. And do the same thing with the second one. And then we're going to get them sewn onto the body, and your narwhal will be complete. Unless you want to embroider a mouth on, that is. Now we've got our long tails to sew it in place. So you're going to want to thread your long tail under the needle, and now to figure out placement for your fins. Generally, I like to go a few rows under the eyes and off to the side, so kind of a diagonal off from the eye. So in this case, which side do I like better facing front? 
I think I like the white side better. So, I'm going to go down one, two, three rows from the eye and over one, two, three, four stitches. I'm going to sew it on here. And if you are not super comfortable with just holding it in place, you can get pins, or if you want to double check your placement before sewing it on, because it is possible to tick back your stitches, but it's kind of a pain in the butt when it's sewn in. So I am just whip stitching this fin in place means I'm going down through the top and going around a stitch beneath. I'm just really going through the entire body of it a couple of times. To make sure that it is secure. And if it seems like your connection isn't super solid, you might want to go through a few extra stitches. Because you really don't want it to come apart. Not after all of the work we've put into it. So the sewing can be somewhat tedious, but for a finished product that not only looks professional enough to sell, but is put together well enough that there's potential that maybe it could stick around for the children of whatever child you make this for if it's a gift. We do know that acrylic yarn and cockroaches are the only things that'll be left after the apocalypse, after all. People like to talk smack about Red Heart, but that stuff is virtually indestructible virtually. Regular Red Heart, not all of the fancy boutique yarns that they've made in recent years. Almost done. And now I'm going back through both legs of a stitch on the fin and going through part of a stitch on the body. That is going to make it so that it is attached much more securely. Not going to have to worry about it coming unraveled that way. So once you've got it sewn on to your satisfaction and you're 99% positive that it's not going anywhere, then you're going to take it and just weave it through a few stitches on the body portion as with all the other parts we've sewn on so far. And when you've got it woven in in a few spots, I'm just going to take it back through a stitch and poke it all the way through the body, just like with all the other parts. Tuck it through, squish the body to fluff it out a little bit and give that tail a snip. Now your end is completely concealed and I'm going to sew on the second fin in the same way. So go ahead and repeat that with the second fin and just in case you do want to embroider a cute little mouth on, I'm going to show you how to do that once your second fin is attached. So now we are going to embroider the mouth on the narwhal. If you have no interest in adding a mouth to it, or if you're going to use felt or something else, then feel free to skip to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more tutorials like this and my weekly yarn talk videos for some inspiration and links to awesome patterns. And if you want to embroider a cute little mouth on here, then stick around for a few minutes and we'll get it done. You're going to want a length of black yarn that is about somewhere between 8 and 12 inches long. I like to have a little bit of extra to weave in. 
for reference, I'm going to look at one of the other narwhals I have already made, which as you can see, the mouth is really just a V-shape. The closer to the eyes it is, the more cute it looks. And I like to, in order to figure out placement, make a triangle shape to figure out which row I think it would look best at. And if I were to draw a proper triangle, it would be way down here. I don't know if I want it down that far. I think we're going to go with this row right here. So with this middle point of the short triangle that we have created, going to go under not just this stitch, but also part of this stitch here so that we are capturing both of them right here. And pull it through, leave a bit of a tail for weaving it in. And we're just going to go right back into the same stitch we started at. I'm actually going to go up this other side in exactly the same way. Now your tail is going to try and catch on to everything else in the universe in the process. Personally, I like to catch the little bit of a tail from the end here in it as we tighten it down. So you just pull to tighten that up. You don't want to pull too far because you don't want it to cinch your stitches together. Hold this over to the side and now we're just going to go right back into the same space we did before just to secure the mouth. Pull it gently. And as you can see, that is pretty stinking cute. So I'm just going to pull on this until we get it knotted right down here on the end. And then I'm just going to take this long tail and stuff it right into the same space. Stick it all the way through the body. Oh. Which, as you can see, with it completely stuffed, is a little more work. And then pull it through. I'm going to pull gently. Take it off your needle, and then you're going to want to squish the stuffing around to shape the face back into place. And for this end here, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. Do the little partial knot here. Pull it together in the center. And then stuff it right back down through that same center space. Poke it out the back of the body. And unless you want it to have a really pulled in face, Again, you just squish it out to reshape. And then you can snip off both of your ends. Squeeze it so they pop inside the body. And your adorable little narwhal amigurumi is now complete. As I said, this is the medium size, and I will be making a written pattern that will correspond with this particular size that will go up on my blog for free, and I will be working on a PDF file with some helpful pictures that will go along with the rest of the sizes. So go ahead and make yourself a whole pod of narwhals. And I will catch you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And have a good day. Bye.